Finally, after all of your preparation, your interview day is here. Do you know how the day will go, where to go, and what to do in the morning? In this video, you will see a step-by-step -step plan for how your day will go and cover some of the most common prep mistakes you need to avoid. All about the day of the interview. So there's a rough outline of almost how every interview goes. You start with a welcome, they say, hi, hello, there's a meet and greet, they may have some breakfast for you, they may not. There will be a tour involved sometime during the day of the facilities. Um, they usually have a place where you can leave your things. If not, um, when they do it electronically, there may be a virtual tour that you can take a, do, um, do. Do the virtual tour before you're on the real interview if possible. Um, they'll have potentially areas when you meet with nurses, residents, fellows, et cetera. Um, you know, you want to be able to have small talking points about the weather, about sports, about whatever, but make sure you're asking those important questions about what they think about the hospital and what they love about it, what their favorite things to do are, um, what you could potentially work on going forward. It's not just, don't, don't just talk about sports and weather. That's a waste of time, right? You're not really sharing who you are or getting good information with that, with talking about those. Um, then you're going to have interviews with the program director, maybe the chair. Uh, you'll have it with other faculty as well. Sometimes they set up a panel of people that will just ask you questions. Um, one place I knew had a panel of interviewees and a paddle of question people facing each other. I don't understand how that one went. Um, there'll be some type of info session on the program. There'll be some type of conclusion and then potentially a, a dinner afterwards or the, or the night before. Um, and so that's a rough outline of all interviews. Arrive early to be on time. So if you are flying to a place or you're going to a city that you've never really quite been in, or maybe you're in New York and you've never quite gone to that hospital, first map it out, figure out how long it takes there, take the subway. If you're not doing much and you have the time, go there uh, you know, in advance to know exactly how the transfers work or the cab goes, or all those things to make sure you will be early to be on time. You want to aim to be there no less than 15 minutes early for each interview. That gives you a, a balloon of, or a leeway of 15 minutes in case something goes awry, all right? That extra 15 minutes before you need to be there also allows you to go to the bathroom. So one technique that is great is, you know, you're going to go to the interview, you get nervous, you got to go to the bathroom. You drank coffee that morning, you're going to have to go to the bathroom. One of, the, one of the worst possible things is when you're sitting in the interview and you got to pee like no tomorrow, but you don't want to ask because they're in the middle of talking. So what I recommend is within those 15 minutes, when you get there, you introduce yourself, the security guard's there, the security guard's going to let you through, ask that security guard, um, where's, the, where's the bathroom that I could use before I go upstairs? They're more than happy to show you where the, tell you where it is or something like that. Go and use the bathroom, okay? It helps calm you down, you empty your bladder, so then you're good to have another cup of coffee when you get upstairs, All right? Only if you're going into an interview um, by yourself, uh, sorry, not virtually, but you're going to the physical place, only carry what you need. Do not carry extra extraneous materials. Now, if you want to take notes, I recommend taking a small pad and paper or a portfolio and paper. You don't want to be looking like you're typing on your phone while someone's talking. Us old people think it's just incredibly rude because it is. You're, you're breaking that eye contact that we really need. Okay. So make sure you're, you're writing notes. People feel flattered. Typing notes, people feel insulted. Carry only what you need. Don't bring extra things. You may not have a place to put them. Things that you might want to think of having are pens, paper, folders, personal care items, and supporting documents. Supporting documents, I think I have another slide on that one. Smile. You need to practice smiling starting today. You want to make sure that you are smiling all the time. So for today, from, blah, blah, blah. from today on, you are going to smile at everybody in the morning when you walk in. You are going to say good morning and or hi or how's it going to everybody. 50% of the people will not even acknowledge your presence, but you are going to practice it over and over and over and over until your face hurts because you want an automatic smile to occur when you see something. When you first look at someone, you look at them and when you, that eye contact clicks, you smile because that makes the other person feel that they made you smile. 
even if you're doing it on purpose. It's amazing how this works. You'll notice it if someone does it to you. You look at someone, you know, a moment, a split second, a, a, an infinitesimal measurement of eye contact, and then open up with a huge smile and say hi. Um, this is a great way to meet people, find a spouse, but it is a great way to make people feel good about themselves and also like you a lot better. Power posing. So power posing is where you, you know, before you go into interviews, um, if you're going to be doing video ones, you really should be doing this. If there's a waiting room with no cameras and people can't see you, you should really be doing this. There is a great playlist on TED Talks that you should watch after this over the next week or so. Watch all six talks. All you have to do is Google talks before job interview, TED or TED Talks job interview. You'll get to this. It's great. You should watch all of them. There's one by, I think her name's Amanda Cuddy. It is absolutely amazing. And if you don't watch it, it's noticeable in, uh, in your interview. You need to bring your can-do and unbelievable attitude. Um, you got to be able to project a can-do and unbelievable attitude throughout your entire interview. If you do not do this and you get feel down and out, that is going to be perceived, especially on these video conferencing ones. If you get like a uh, really tired or you're just not into it, it is the worst interview that you could possibly imagine. So make sure you are caffeinating it up, you know, carry extra caffeine if you're worried you're going to run out, but you need to keep that energy going all day. Not insane. Insane energy is not good. There was a resident once who came or a student once who came to interview who had this in, almost insane energy. And when the program director asked, how do you want me to remember you after today? And her response was that I can sing. Now she was there to interview for pediatrics and she wanted the program to remember, program director to remember that she could sing. And so he thought that was one of the weirdest answers he ever got. So he goes, oh, well, why don't you sing me a few bars? And so then she broke into a song from The Little Mermaid. Um, the other weird thing is later in the day, that same individual while on the tour asked about STD clinics. And if um, you need to be a regular patient here to be able to go to those clinics. So there was a lot of weird things about that interview. So don't do those things and don't have an energy that's crazy. I don't know how to tell you to do that other than video yourself practicing your energy and evaluate it for yourself. Take notes on every interview that you're going on. To do that, there's this app from the NRMP called Prism. Download it. You can put all of your interviews in it to keep track of them. And then it has checklists uh, or it has a whole dia. Uh, I don't even know the right words anymore, but you know, all these radio labeled icons that you can just click, 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 you know, how much did you like this of that program? And it has pre-categorized things that you can evaluate for each program. And since you put all your pro, all the programs that you're interviewing into it, it then you can then evaluate them easily later on, print out the spreadsheets. I'm not going to go through what it looks like or anything, but it is amazing. You should definitely download this app to use it. I wish I could have used this app um, when I interview for regular jobs. Again, a thank you note at the end of the day, a handwritten thank you note. You walk out of the hospital or you close your computer, write those thank you notes immediately. You don't have to mail them immediately, but write them immediately after so it's said and done. Just buy a stack. They're not that expensive. I, you know, emails are cheap. I get it. But a handwritten thank you note goes a long way. Um, it puts you just a little bit more because it shows how much effort you truly put in. If someone did all of the things that we're talking about today, and I re I'll recognize them easily on any type of interview, if someone really put in all this work, I would rank that person very high because the amount of work I am telling you to do tonight to make sure you do outstanding on your interviews is a, sh is a lot of work. And if you get that done and I see all that in your interview and then bam, I have a personalized handwritten thank you letter arriving a little after that, I would rank you high because that is the effort. That is the type of personality that I want in my program is true. There's tons of resources. I will send all this to you. Not all of these things are great, like where they tell you questions that you should ask on your interview. Please don't do that. Stick to what we talked about tonight. 
Um, and then also on those lists of things, I have a, a bunch of the bad ones crossed out so you can see. And if I don't get that to you tonight, it will be in your email tomorrow. These are three amazing books that will definitely help you do phenomenal on interviews. Never Split the Difference is an absolutely amazing book on negotiating and being able to talk with people. It's not exactly residency interviews, but this will last you a lifetime. What Color is Your Parachute? It is a book written on how to interview for jobs look for jobs, get jobs, not geared towards medicine. That being said, it is friggin' amazing. You guys can interpret it for medicine, for residency, but that book is so worth it. Um, I recommend getting like the 2018, 19, 20 version. You don't have to buy the brand new one, buy one of the 18, 19, 20 ones. 18, 19, 20 includes a lot of social media and other things in it. And then Ierson's getting in residency guide. It's a big book. Um, a lot of libraries have it. There's ways to get it through alternative means um, Z library is one of those. If you want to look for it and you cannot afford it, there is so much more in this presentation, but the majority of it is stuff that I will wind up sending to you. These are horrible things that you should not do. I'll give you a second to read through these and I'll give you two more things and then we'll stop. All right, there's 10 commandments of job hunting. Um, I'm gonna not go through these right now. You can find those in that book, um, What Color Is Your Parachute? And keep calm and absolutely good luck.